All right, our topic for this video is uh, transmission of power. And basically, how do electrical companies transmit electricity over long distances? And why do they use alternating current anyway? Why not direct current? Well, we are going to answer those questions in this video. Um, you may notice, you've, I'm sure you've seen these sorts of towers. They have them here in the Philippines as well. Um, but they have those all over the place in the U.S. and pretty much any developed country has these giant towers of electrical transmission lines. Um, these really big towers are the really high voltage ones, the really dangerous ones. So um, we will take a look at what's going on with all this and why those things exist. All right, so we have a schematic diagram. Um, that shows you what's going on in a hypothetical transmission system for basically sending power from the power plant to the people who use the power. So um, I'll just summarize really quick with the text and then we can zoom in on parts of the picture here. So power is generated at a power plant and then voltage is stepped up by a transformer to transmit it over long distance. And then later when it gets closer to where it's getting going to actually be used by the people, the consumers, then it is stepped down again by a different transformer. So we have a step-up transformer, step-down transformer. All right, um, let's zoom in on this and talk about it in a little more detail. So here you have your power generation station. That's going to be your power plant. Possibly it's coal-fired power plant. It might be a natural gas or hydroelectric station. It could be windmills or solar power plant. Um, it could also be, oh gosh, nuclear power plant. I mean, anything. Basically, this is where your power is produced. All right. Once it's produced, uh, it's probably at a decently high voltage, like maybe, I don't know, a couple thousand volts. But in order to transmit it efficiently, and we'll talk more about that later in the video, they need to step up that voltage to a much higher value. And depending on how far they're sending that electricity, they might use as much as 700,000 volts. 500,000, 300, you know, 230, 138, all of those are different values of voltage that they use for transmitting power over long distances. All of those are thousands of volts, 138,000 volts. That's a lot of volts. That is deadly. If you get anywhere near that wire, it's going to jump to you and just zap you. By the way, when I say near, I mean like four or five feet. So you don't need to worry about it when they're way up there at the top of the tower. But if you decided to be stupid and ignore all those signs that they have near these big towers that say don't climb and don't come near me, if you do climb and go up there you could very well zap yourself and then also disrupt the power for a whole bunch of people. You'd be dead. They'd all lose their power for a while until it got fixed. So don't go near those high, high voltage power lines. They will kill you. Um, after it finishes its journey over probably a very long distance on those power lines, then it's going to reach what's called a substation. In the substation, there's a big transformer, a bunch of big transformers that are going to step the voltage back down again to a more reasonable value. And if that, it, and then depending on who the consumer is, then it's going to be different values of voltage. Um, that, that this step-down transformer will take it to. So it might take it from like 750,000 volts down to maybe 26,000 volts, and that could be used by a factory, perhaps. Um, maybe it would be down to something a little bit less than that, but still pretty high, and that might be some other kind of factory or um, industrial center. Um, and then finally, it's going to end up at your house, and your neighborhood probably has one of these guys with a cylinder, a metal cylinder attached to it that you've always wondered what that thing was. And maybe you've even heard somebody call it a transformer. It is a transformer. And it's the one that transforms the voltage down to whatever the voltage is that is used at your house. Um, in the Philippines, it's 220. In the U.S., it's 110. So um, in any case, the um, that's how it works. So... Basically, you've got transformers that are changing the voltage at various points, and then you've got just power cables that are carrying the, the current. Um, 
between the power station where it's produced and the places where it's used. All right, that is the big picture of what's going on. Now let's talk a little bit more about the fact that we're using alternating current. Okay, so why alternating current? Why not direct current? Because of course all of our devices, our phones and computers and electronics and everything, they all use direct current. So why are we transmitting power using alternating current? Well, there are three really good reasons why alternating current is the preferred way, actually the way of transmitting power. First, um, alternating current generators are more straightforward to design and easier to manage than DC generators. Um, you might remember when we talked about uh, motors and generators, an alternating current generator is able to use um, a device called slip rings, a pair of devices called slip rings. Those are just solid rings that you attach to the ends of the coil of wire that is going to be spinning. Um, and you just hook up the slip rings and hook them into the circuit and that's it. For a DC generator or motor, you have to have that commutator. And that commutator really makes things more complicated. So just to summarize, going with AC is simpler than going with DC. And it's more straightforward and cheaper, less expensive. Secondly, possibly the most important thing is that alternating current allows the use of transformers. Um, you may remember from our discussion of how transformers work, they require alternating current. Transformers do not work with direct current. So you have to have alternating current if you're going to have transformers. And we do have transformers used extensively in the power transmission system, as you just saw. There's the step up transformer before you send the power, and there's the step down transformer when it gets to where it's going. So transformers are used extensively in power transmission. So you need alternating current if you're going to be using transformers. All right. Direct current, you can't do that. You can't use transformers, and that means you couldn't transform the voltage if you were sending it by direct current. Lastly, um, high voltage power transmission saves a lot of energy and money. So the fact that we're using alternating current allows us to use transformers, and because we can use transformers, we can step the voltage up really high. And the really high voltage is going to save us a lot of energy and a lot of money. So we'll talk about the last slide here. We'll talk about how high voltage allows us to save energy. All right, so why does it save energy to transmit power at really high voltage? And the answer is um, this equation, basically, which you might remember from our transformers uh, video. Um, the equation for voltage and current in a transformer is as follows. They're multiplied, right? The primary multiplied by the second primary current, primary voltage is equal to secondary current times secondary voltage. Since they're multiplied, you may remember that that, that implies an inverse relationship. So if the voltage in the secondary is much higher than the voltage in the primary, then that means that the current in the secondary must be much lower than the current in the primary. So what do we got going on there? Basically, we're dropping. If voltage is increased dramatically, then current is decreased dramatically. If the current is much, much, much lower, then there's going to be much, much less frictional resistance inside the electrical power transmission cables, less resistance in there, less, less rubbing of the electrons against each other. Um, all of that is going to equal uh, less heating of the wires. So the wires aren't, aren't going to heat up as much as the power flows through them. And that is going to re that's going to result in much less energy loss all right, than if you transmit it at lower voltage. Lower voltage is going to be higher current. Higher current means hotter. Hotter means more energy loss. And that's less efficient. It costs more money. So, bam! That is why we use high voltage for transmitting power over long distances. All right, it's kind of dangerous, definitely dangerous for the guys who have to do work on those power cables. Um, but it saves a lot of money and a lot of energy for everybody else. 
So I guess that's one of those things about modern life. Some people risk their lives so that other people can save money. Um, anyways, that's it for this video. And this is actually our last video. So I hope you have found these videos useful. And I definitely have enjoyed making them. And uh, we'll just say sign off and take care. And uh, thanks for watching.